Well, it's finally happened. Everyone's channel has been switched over to this uh, gray mess. Let's try to make the best of things. We'll start with the basic channel. Now, when you click Edit Channel, the first thing you come to is the Appearance tab. From here, we can pick a new avatar. And, of course, I'm going to load mine. Background we'll cover a little later in this video. For now, let's just choose a background color. Black works for me. I'll pick it. In the Info and Settings tab, you can change your channel name. It's up to 64 characters long. Your channel description can be up to 1,000 characters. Your channel's tags can be about 480 characters. Now, it'll warn you if you use too many tags, but it won't tell you what the limit really is. Be sure to have this box checked, or your channel won't be visible to anyone. When you're done editing, click here to save the changes you've made. As you can see, my new text is now in place, and I went back to edit some more. Back in the Info tab, you'll see the Default tab. One of these three tabs will be the first thing your users see when they come to your channel. Under the Featured tab, you have one of four choices. In fact, you don't even need a Featured tab on your channel. Let's see what the Creator tab looks like. From here, you can add a Featured video. Now, it must be from a playlist, either of your own uploads or something you've saved to a playlist. You can't choose a video at random no longer. Note that this section is glitchy. You might have to do this two or three times to get it to show the video you intended to show. And there's our video. You can set it to autoplay as well if you want. Now let's feature some playlists. I have two playlists. I will select them both. And there they are. In the other channel section, you can rename the header. Could be anything you want. Type in the name of the YouTube channel, the username that is. Click Add, Apply, and there it is. Now we can edit all this stuff. We can add some links. Up to 20 links of 100 characters each. Now if you uh, go over on this, it doesn't tell you where you've messed up, so it helps to save every now and then. The About This User section can be up to 5,000 characters long. It's about 12 paragraphs of text. You can use formatting or whatever for lists and stuff. These fields can only be 50 characters at most, including your interests, which is kind of sad. Text formatting is not allowed. When you've made all your changes, click Apply. Any extra data is under the More tab now. Let's see what the Blogger Featured tab allows us to do. Now, besides having a featured video, this will also show all the videos in one specific playlist of your choice. Note that it's a little glitchy. It doesn't show you which playlist you're selecting, but once you click Apply, you'll see that it has taken hold. And there it is. I didn't want that to show, so I'm going to put it back. Now, if we choose Network for our Featured tabs, we now have, besides the possibility of a featured video, just simply a list of channels. And yet we still have other channels on the right side, also with a customizable header. The Everything Featured tab has all these features, but it does not have a breakdown of one playlist, a simple list of videos, which we do get in the Blogger tab, which I like best. And one more thing, the uh, featured playlist can also be renamed. And there you have it. Now let's get to that background. I made a special background for this video and I will leave it up for the entire month. So feel free to right click and save it to your computer and check it out on your own time. First of all, let me put these headers back. By deleting the custom headers, the defaults come back. There are 20 pixels above your channel between the YouTube logo and your own channel box. 20 pixels is not a lot, but your background will show through. Keep in mind that there will be a blank space of 50 pixels below your channel and the bottom of the web page. This location will change based on which tab you're looking at. This is my background image. The pink area and the little black box around it will be covered entirely by the gray channel. I put these numbers on the side here so you can see relatively how far down each page goes. As you can see, number 50 is peeking through in the blank space. On this tab, 10 is showing, 14 and a half for the comment page, a little over 29 for the videos page. And when you're loading a long list of videos, you can exceed your entire 3000 pixels limit, but you can set your background image to repeat and it takes care of the problem. Now, if your screen is only 1024 pixels wide, that doesn't leave a lot of space to see anyone's background image. Only 1003 pixels are visible to you that is because there are two pixels on the left side and 19 pixels for the scroll bar on the right side. Now this is with Internet Explorer, so I don't know if it's different in other browsers. In every case, your channel is 970 pixels wide. 
and on a basic screen, there's only 16 pixels visible on the left side and 17 pixels visible on the right side of anyone's background image. Using this example of a 1600 pixel wide widescreen monitor, there are larger sections of background graphics visible on both the left and right side. Here's how it breaks down. There will be two pixels of border on the leftmost side of the screen, 304 pixels for graphics, 970 pixels of your channel box, 305 pixels for graphics on the right, plus the 19 pixel scroll bar equals an even 1600. To work it backwards, let's start with a 1600 pixel wide resolution. You take off two pixels for the left border, and 19 for the scroll bar, that leaves 1,579 pixels for our background image. And in the middle of that is a 970 pixel wide channel, so that only leaves 609 edge pixels on the left and right combined. Now we have that figure and we get 304.5. There's no such thing as a half pixel, so the left side is rounded down, the right side is rounded up, which gives us the exact figures that is true on a screenshot. It's a little tricky here, but YouTube will automatically center your image properly unless it is very, very large. Now it helps to experiment a bit just to be sure you're going to get it exactly as you want. Now if your image is rather small, it helps just to turn on the, the repeating function just to tile it. And there is a limit of 3000 pixels on the longest side of your image. Any longer and it is reduced proportionally until the longest side is 3000 pixels. Kind of makes a mess of things, so keep that in mind. And remember, everything you've seen here is just guidelines and suggestions based on my own experimentation. I suggest you run a few trials with a basic graphic before you spend hours coming up with something and just to have it not work. And who knows, YouTube might change their minds and everything will be all different next week, so don't count on any of this holding. This is Moreski Bear, thanking you for watching.